Welcome everybody to another edition of PNW Best Life. Today we're going to be talking about the North of Falcon process and the just unveiled salmon forecast for you, the year 2022, specifically in the Puget Sound. But hit the subscribe button, turn notifications on. All right, let's get into it. So we started with a review of the environment conditions, which is very important for the survival of salmon and the vitality of salmon, both the numbers, the size, and really it's about the conditions in the North Pacific and in the freshwater and all of these things. So WDFW walked through, uh, first of all, the environment. Um, uh, one of the things they shared was there's a really good chance that for the next three months, we're going to continue to be in El uh, or in La Nina conditions. Now La Nina is better for salmon, although it is colder and wetter. Uh, it creates better environment conditions for, uh, for salmon to thrive and survive. We do have drought conditions uh, outside of the Pacific Northwest. As soon as you go south and east, uh, you get into some major, major drought conditions. But up in the Pacific Northwest, we benefit tremendously from La Nina. Our snowpack is um, 90 to 100 percent what it needs to be. So a very positive uh, situation there. If you've been following what's going on with our marine conditions, uh, one of the things you're concerned about is the blob, the, right? The warm water uh, mass that's been collecting in the North Pacific, that's been thrown off the ecosystem and making it uh, more challenging for salmon and steelhead uh, to feed and survive and grow big. So if you take a look at uh, this graphic, the blob has been uh, shrinking and has not lasted as long most recently. Uh, although the, the one that uh, persisted until April 2021 was still the second largest on record. Uh, a lot of this activity got started in 2014 and we've seen stock after stock of salmon and steelhead crash and we're still recovering from that blob effect. While the conditions are definitely getting better and we'll talk about how good, how much better in, in a minute here, uh, it's important to remember that we're still dealing with incredibly warm uh, or, or warmer ocean and land conditions. Uh, even this January was the sixth warmest in 143 years. So we're still on a warming trend uh, that is a, a net negative for salmon uh, and steelhead. Some good news is that the salmon indicator, which is a combination of these physical and biological indicators, you can pause and zoom in and take a look at what those are. Um, but those are in the best shape they've been in in 24 years this is the second best uh, 2021 was the second best on record in 24 years and uh, it was you know I as I saw this in the presentation I was like oh that's cool you know hopefully that means good things for all the out migrating fish uh, but Ron Garner uh, he, he jumped in he was like hey guys um, last time was this good we had 20 40 pound Chinook hit the dock in Westport on the same day he's like look when when the conditions are getting this good the returning fish are gonna be bigger they're gonna be healthier you're gonna have more 20s 30s 40s, yes, and 50 pound king salmon this summer. And uh, I think my heart skipped a beat a little bit. I got, my palms started to sweat, I got a little, I got a little excited. And I'm still, I'm still excited thinking about uh, that opportunity. What that means for us in the Puget Sound, right? If you're not getting out to the ocean, that's okay. In the Puget Sound, if you get that marine area 10, maybe 11, 13 season going into August, um, you're, you're, gonna be, you're gonna be catching some big, some big, big Chinook. Uh, headed up, head up the rivers in the, in the central and south sound. Uh, if those seasons hold up, which we'll talk about here in uh, a minute here, so so that's good news. Uh, let's go right to the the Chinook forecast for 2022, right? So um, Puget Sound Chinook numbers they kind of bottomed out in 2020, and uh, the, the rebounding 2021 was better. 2022 uh, is forecasted to be slightly better than that. Um, now. This is against the backdrop of the natural spawners, the wild fish uh, are ESA listed and they're still not doing uh, very well in terms of historical numbers there. And that will create challenges, right? As the most constrained uh, river with wild, uh, wild fish is gonna put limitations on our, our, our chance to, to really fish for hatchery fish. And uh, we're gonna talk about that in a minute here, the Stiligwamish, but uh, it's important to realize that uh, these are federally ESA listed salmon that um, we only get to fish on with proper regulations and controls in place and 
even WDFW's hands are tied and, and tribal hands are tied in this case based on these federal um, federal mandates. So uh, let's take a close, let's take a look at the, the map here of Chinook returns in 2021. So as you can see, um, you know, some rivers really outperform. You look at the green, you look at the Puyallup, and then other rivers were uh, were, were not as good. You know, the Squally disappointed last year. I fished a little bit on the Squally last year and it, it was it was okay, uh, it wasn't great, but the still Guamish um, was, was, was poor, I, again, which is, which is the struggling run uh, in the North Sound that's constraining a lot of our season. So that's not, that's not good. Um, in 2022, look at the fall Chinook forecast. And unfortunately, while the picture is mostly positive, uh, still Guamish is again, uh, not uh, expected to have uh, good returns. Uh, even though in the South Sound we are, we do have some, some good news there with the green again and the Puyallup again, those systems. What that means for Puget Sound fishermen is, is uh, you know, the, the, the Marine Area 11 and 10, which will have less regulatory impact from the um, Stillaguamish stock, although it will still have some as these fish stray and they move around the Puget Sound. They don't just make a, a beeline for their natal rivers, right? Um, there could be a great opportunity there in August to catch some really big fish and good numbers of fish, depending on the um, feeding situation uh, as, these, as these fish come, come into the uh, deeper parts of, of the sound. So what I mean by that is uh, if, if the fish come in really hungry and they're still actively feeding, fishermen are gonna catch a lot of fish. If they eat a lot out in the ocean in the strait and they come in uh, basically full and, and metabolically closer to spawning, as we saw in 2020, not as even with fish there, they won't be very snappy. It'll be harder to catch. Uh, and in 2020, if you remember, like our season went all the way through because we didn't get the quota then. So <clears throat> we'll see how that goes. But it's the setup right now for 10 and 11 uh, for Chinook looks looks pretty good. And of course, 13 as well uh, would be would be part of that. So um, all right. <clears throat> now uh, the, probably the worst place to fish in uh, 2022 in the Puget Sound for Chinook is going to be Marine Area 7, the San Juans. And again, this is because the uh, a lot of the still Guamish fish, they, they out migrate, they spend time in there. That's why we lost the winter blackmouth season um, in Marine Area 7. And uh, additionally, uh, you know, it, as these fish return, uh, there's going to be a really limited season on uh, on Chinook in Marine Area 7. Let's talk about coho. So coho, looking at the 2021 returns, first of all, uh, it, it, was, it, was, it was positive throughout, throughout the sound, uh, other than, except for really the South Sound, struggled a bit more, uh, mostly due to a disappointing run on the Puyallup, uh, having fished uh, the um, upper part of that above the White River confluence, there was definitely fewer fish. I could tell there was definitely fewer fish um, smaller fish, uh, not as healthy of a run, and in the south, southern parts of 10, um, it, was, it wasn't as good. Uh, around the oil docks and up in 9, it was much better as a lot of these coho were bound for these North Sound rivers, um, and, and that made for better fishing uh, around the Edmonds area, uh, around Possession. Um, etc. So we, that's, that's basically what we saw in 2021. If you look at the forecast overall, uh, we're still coming up from the, uh, the coho crash in 2015 and depletion uh, a little bit depleted in 2019 and we continue to improve. Uh, although this is gonna, this, this is still, even though it's a net improvement, it's gonna hide a little bit of weakness that's going on, continue weakness in the South Sound. Once you look at the, the coho forecast map, you see a lot of red in the South Sound, Nisqually, Puyallup, White River, all expected to be down for them. And it's a net positive though, because a lot of these, a lot of coho return to the Skagit River, and that is supposed to be better than the 10 year average uh, significantly. And so the run overall is upgraded. Now what that means is if you're a coho fisherman, uh, you might want to think again about the Edmonds area and, and possession in north area, northern areas in the northern parts of 10 versus trying to intercept them in 11 or, or the southern parts of, uh, of 10. So best part of the uh, coho forecast, uh, I would, I would want to say Marine Area 7, um, but we, I don't know if we're going to get impacted seasons there because of the Chinook 
Steely Chinook situation, but that would be a great place to fish with all those Skagit fish uh, coming back. And then Marine Area 9, 10 though, as I talked about on the northern ends of 10, throughout nine, it's probably gonna be the best place. Um, and again, that nine will probably be marked selective again, which um, which uh, will will impact um, you know the uh, how many fish you can actually retain versus catch. Probably darkest spot in the forecast, Marine Area 11. Uh, I don't know if I would even worry about fishing Marine Area 11 for coho. Um, it it's not expected to be very good. So, all right. So let's look at the uh, the chum return. So 2021 was um, it was not a great year for chum, but it was better in the South Sound than what uh, initially forecasts thought it would be. It was not good in Hood Canal. It was not good in the North Sound. And so when you go over to the, the forecast for 2022, you see more expected weakness in Hood Canal, more expected weakness in the South Sound, but some turnaround in the North Sound, which is important. Those North Sound stocks uh, are a really big deal to, to rebound. Uh, chum take the longest of the uh, five Pacific salmon species to rebound. They spend the least amount of time in fresh water, experience heavy predation down in the estuaries, you know, sea run cuts and things chomping on them uh, on the chum fry when that come out in the springtime. And so um, it just takes them a longer time to rebound, five to 10 years. And that's kind of the cycle we're in. If you look at the chum forecast, we had a low in 2019 and we're just kind of steadily working our way back. Um, hopefully 2023, 24 continues that trend and we kind of get back to those great chum fisheries uh, we've experienced in the last decade. So last we'll hit sockeye. Uh, no big surprises here. Lake Washington run is still trash. Uh, sockeye in general, not good. Although uh, Baker Lake is expected to have a fishable number of um, returning uh, salmon here that should, should hopefully allow fishery similar to last year. Not gangbusters by any means, but enough fish hopefully to open uh, season there. Um, just uh, final comments, observations. You know, if you're in the North Sound uh, and you don't get the season you want in Area 7, you might might consider popping over to, to Canadian waters. You might consider uh, going down south to hit a 9 or if 8-2 opens up for Coho. Um, you know, some other options there in the South Sound. Uh, you may want to go north a little bit, hit that Central Sound area for Chinook and Coho as the um, as the year progresses along, especially avoiding the South Sound for Coho. Um, and you also might also want to, if you've got the right boat, uh, heading out to Westport or the Columbia, which are the ocean season this year is expected to be much stronger. Um, and so you look at kind of this overall graphic, you can see that we've got yellows and reds in the sound. Uh, there's going to be bright spots for sure, but they're going to be also uh, weighed down by some, some negatives. Um, but the Strait, uh, Western Strait especially, and the ocean um, might be uh, better places to spend your time, assuming you can afford the gas to get out there and get some, uh, some fishing done. Um, hope you'll uh, join me, uh, hopefully in about a week, for some CQ uh, fun I'll be able to post and uh, taking advantage of the blackmouth fishery that opened out there and the ocean bottom fish opener. Stay safe out there. Uh, please like this video if this was helpful and informative to you and subscribe to the channel, turn those notifications on. Hope to see you out there. Take care, stay safe, tight lines.